Hello there, person. Hey, let's check out what's new with Wraithbinder. Lots of items this week. This has been a really fun week creating just item after item. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with some of these whammies, these curses, you could say. There's blessings and curses inside the item chest. I've moved the item chest over here so it's really close to my base so I can just show a bunch of items really fast. It's really just for my convenience, debugging and creating art and showing you, my friend. Hello. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, check out the firestorm. This is um, this is a whammy item, a curse that just causes fire to fall everywhere. And this happens for every single um, player in the match. So uh, whether they're friend or foe, the fire is just going to fall down near anybody that's a player. And uh, if the fire hits you, it does a little bit of damage at first, but then you also catch on fire. You can see my player has some a fire sort of icon on top of him there for a second. Also, any building that gets hit with fire will also catch fire. Um, so like this is the, there, you know, if there's a, a fire hits this guardian. Let's actually do, let's make this fire hit the guardian. Uh, had to go into the rocks, didn't it? There we go. So let's make it hit this guardian. One of these is certainly going to hit. There we go. Boom. The Guardian's on fire now. Also, um, fire can spread. So if I'm on fire and I touch something else, see, I just touched that uh, that creep right there. The creep touches on fire. So fire spreads. That's pretty fun. Um, and so now the mechanics of fire are in here. It's going to be uh, interesting to see what else can be done with this. Uh, I can create trees, things that can, other things that can light on fire. Um, also, I'm thinking of adding these temples, something like a temple where somewhere in the match you can go and pray at the temple or something like that, and then you get fi your bow will turn on and and get whatever um, element that you're praying to. So you get there's the fire element, the ice element, the acid element, and um, and lightning. So let's check out some of these other storms. There's four storms. Let's go for the thunderstorm. The thunderstorm is pretty visually cool we got bolts of lightning falling down from the sky wait I'm gonna do something really so we can see which of these items let's do this Rick a pile do it again I just want this to be so every item comes out identified so we can see what their icons look like too or their little their icon models their model their three-dimensional icons so, all right, let's, uh, oh, that's what the thunderstorm looks like as an icon, or as a model. Here's thunderstorm. And this does some, um, a, a more damage than the firestorm does. It also leaves behind a little burn mark on the ground. And it also lights things on fire, so let's see if we can get hit. There we go, I got hit with that, and now I'm on fire. And there, the guardian got hit. It's on fire. This is an interesting one too. This does a lot of dev devastation, but you just like this thing is just hitting the ground. It's kind of a cool item because you could actually infiltrate an enemy's base while you've got a thunderstorm on and just wreck their base that way. That's pretty neat. In fact, you know what? While we're here, I think that thunderstorm could use a little bit more lightning. Let's add more lightning to that. We'll spawn two every time it does um, does one of these. And I think this one could be a little tighter, closer to the player. And since this is data-driven here, I didn't have to recompile the game to do that. That's pretty sweet. Data-driven stuff is awesome. That's neat. Cool. I like seeing two of those. Huh, we can also alternate and get get it so it's going, you know, with like one lightning. They're not always two at exactly the same time. I can work on that later though. Okay, so let's check out some more items. Um, let's make it so we're going to forcibly spawn the acid storm. Acid storm's another storm that drops like little splotches of acid on the ground. 
the acid sits there for a while and does damage to you over time, kind of like the fire does, and it also spreads. So if you've got acid on you and you touch somebody else, you, it will get acid too. So there, I just touched that guardian and it's, it's now getting hit. See how much it's getting hit? Boom, a lot. So there's little, little like pools of acid hitting everywhere. And um, this is another devastating one. You go into somebody else's base, you can really destroy things pretty fast. But keep in mind, this is also going to apply. This, all these storms apply to all players in the match. So, if, so you getting this from the chest is doing this everywhere that there's a player on the map. So, for, pretty fun, really interesting thing to add to the game. Um, let's go ahead and try. Let's look at the ice storm or snowstorm, actually. Snowstorm is um, drops icicles, and these icicles will freeze you for a moment. Let's check out what it looks like when you get frozen. Here's the snowstorm. Boom, I'm frozen. I can't move, can't use any bu any buttons or anything for a second. And uh, look like I'm frozen. And I'm, it pauses your animation in whatever frame you're at. So actually, if I, I'm swinging the sword during one of these. There we go. Ah, it didn't quite work. But anyways, it pauses you right in the middle of your frame of what you're doing. And, um, so, it, once again, we've got four new mechanics here at work. There's the fire mechanic, there's ice mechanic. Fire fire spreads and it does damage. Ice uh, will cause you to be frozen for a second, you can't move. Acid does some damage over time. And lightning um, does damage. And I think, and also lights things on fire. But I think what I'm gonna also do with lightning is make it so that it chains. So when it hits you, it also hits, it bounces and hits something else near you um, with chain lightning. So that mechanic will get a little bit more fun and interesting and unique. So uh, let's check out some more items. I mean, there's a whole bunch more here to check out. Um, I think I've shown some of these before. The rejuvenator um, will replenish your hit points over time. The replenisher replenishes your magic points over time. EXP booster gives you an experience boost for a while. Protector is armor. Um, damager is damage. We can take a look at a few of these, I guess. Let's look at protector. Um, the reflector is pretty neat too. That's a really interesting one. It will it will actually reflect damage. So here's what the uh, the protector looks like. I kind of got it too fast there, but it's just a little shield and you can see the counter underneath my name in the top of the screen there. That's how long I have this item for and all the items like this work this way. They're temporary. They work over a certain duration and um, so yeah, protectors like that. Damager does more damage, same kind of thing. Reflector, let's, let's just take a look at that real quick. Reflector is neat because it actually uh, it, it reflects any damage that you take. So if you take damage, it will reflect a certain percentage of that damage back on the person that did the damage to you. I think it's 50%. Let's check that out. Oh, okay. See, when, when the chest is over here normally, it, um, actually, let's just get it from here. It can't fall behind rocks. Like I said before, the, uh, I've just got it up here. Ooh. So that we had, it's easier to debug. Um, so, but anyways, yeah, reflector is really neat. In battle, you can you get a reflect damage based on back to people that hit you. Um, a lot of these effects are all happening in one little function here called apply damage. This is a part of the health system. When an entity ticks its health, it goes through its list of deltas. There's a health deltas, which means like you know a delta could be positive or negative. Negative ones are damage. So whenever it's negative, it, apply, it goes and it uh, calls this function called apply damage. And apply damage checks out a bunch of things, like the armor, the defense rating of the player taking the damage, the uh, damage rating of the player doing the damage, and then this is where that's applied. It's just a, basically a, a factor, attack over defense. And then uh, there's critical chance right here. That's the item slasher. Um, here's where it applies the, flat, the factor. And then after that, here's where we do all the other things, like reflection. So reflection, for example, we, we were just looking at that item. It has to be damaging. It has to not be reflected already, right? So you can't just reflect and then reflect back damage and back and back and back and back. That would just be an infinite loop and everybody would die instantly. So it, um, when it applies reflection, it has to make sure that it's not already reflected. Um, and that is actually a, 
That is known because um, uh, because all these health deltas have a refle uh, reflected flag. So when you create a health delta, it could be like, okay, I want to do negative four hit points. You can also set some flags like uh, I want this to be forced or I want th this is reflected damage, that kind of thing. So um, that's reflection. Basically, it's just a, a, a percentage that gets applied to the delta. And then hit points, or uh, yeah, ha hip HP steal. This is just stealing hit points when you get them, and magic points too, or matter points. Uh, those are those can be stolen. There's a stun, um, and then there's fire which spreads, and then acid which spreads, and then ice which freezes. So that's what that's where all this kind of stuff is. All these mechanics are kind of buried in this function here. Um, let's take a look at uh, the red vampire. Red vampire is when you steal hit points, and um, I don't really have a any bots here on the map. You know what? Here, let's go ahead and um, let's add some bots to the map so we can see what the heck some of these things are doing. I'm just going to make them sit there and do nothing so that we can easily go over and steal some of their hit points. Uh, so yeah, Red Vampire is hit point stealing and um, we'll get this item, we'll go over and hit the enemy. I'll actually, here, I'll, I'll damage myself. Whoa. We gotta make sure and get out of his base before we get. Wait, oh, don't fall behind there. Here we go. Okay, we got vampire. I've got some. I'm there. I got 32 out of 80 hit points. Um, oh, I don't have a, anything I can hit him with. There we go. That sword. Okay. So now I got 50 hit points. 53 hit points. 56 hit points. You can see I'm gaining some hit points from from this, and it, it will show. It shows above my head as well. It was minus two to him, and plus plus some to me. So yeah, that's that's a uh, that's how that works. Um, you're just stealing hit points from all the damage you're dealing, and it's the same thing with the uh, the blue vampire. Blue vampire steals matter points. Um, slasher. Uh, that's a critical chance. I think I showed this in a video before. Stunner is pretty cool. That's that's actually let's show that one. Stunner's sweet because you get to you stun people for a second. Um. Yeah, this is one I really have to play. I have to play some more matches to see how get the timing down. You know, I've got it currently set to stun for one second, <clears throat> but that might need to be um, lowered or adjusted a bit. So you can't really tell that. You can tell that he's stunned, right, from the the animation he's doing. But it's a lot more, a lot more. It's like neater looking when you're actually playing a match and you, you you've actually disabled your foe for a second and they're um <clears throat> they they stop all their movement, stop what they're doing. So that's a really uh, really powerful item there. Um, the disguiser. This one's so great. So this turns you into an enemy, or it makes you look like an enemy. And it, you take on all the attributes of your enemy. So there, you get you your name is their name, your color scheme is their is their color scheme, your weapon is their weapon, even if it gets dropped out of your hands. Um, your armor, everything about your look changes. So this is the disguiser. Oh, I look like Ali now. So I'm, I'm pink. I look like Ali. I'm the same height as Ali. I have Hall Ali's weapon, even. In fact, this guy have a shield. I'll show you. I'll show you the weapon drop. It's pretty cool when you um, start with all abilities, so that Ali can use the shield. There, I've got this little bot, this little uh, AI set up, so it always uses its shield when I'm nearby. So it's just a little debugging thing. I can set up the AI so they're they're. Uh, they do nothing but use the shield. Oh, dropped back behind the rocks again. Okay. There we go. Now I look like cat. I have a spear. Okay, so let's go over here and let's uh let's I'm gonna use my spear against Alley and my, my weapon will go flying. Boom! See I've got the spear down there. And after some time goes by, I'll turn back into myself after the timer runs up. I've got 13 more seconds. Let's speed up time a little bit. Okay, two, one, boom. I'm back to Nat. And if I use this again, I 
Boom, there's now my weapon is back to my weapon. My color scheme is back to my color scheme, my name, everything. So that's a re th this is probably one of my favorite new items, right? The disguiser. So cool. You get to turn into an enemy. You can infiltrate somebody's base. You can pretend to be someone else. Oh, I love that item. Okay, so uh, we've seen the minifier, but let's show the minifier again. I love the minifier. This is so great. It's got a funny little icon, too. Takes a second longer to load because we've got seven bots here. And all of their unique armor sets and all that. So there's the minifier item. And boom, I'm a little tiny. I'm so tiny. Not only are you tiny, but you do less damage. So you're just a tiny little weakling. Okay, uh, let's check out something. Is there anything more? Oh, there's a, there's a few more that are pretty neat. Disabler, scrambler, um, scrambler. Scrambler will take your controls and scramble them up. Um, I tried making it so it scrambles not only your your uh, direction but your items as well, your abilities. Uh, but that was just kind of too punishing, so I took that off and made it just so it scrambles up your your actual direction. Come on here. This one kind of looks like a Rubik's cube a little bit. So uh, you can't really tell what I'm pressing here on the key on my keyboard right now, but it's definitely not the direction that I'm trying to head in. So I really scram it scrambles you up, you know. You Really adds a challenge to uh, to playing here for about 30 seconds. So that's another um, curse item. Um, Disabler. This is another curse item, and this one will remove all of your abilities. So for a time, for that duration of the item, I think I'll, most of these are 30 seconds. Uh, you you can't use any of your abilities. So right now I've I had turned on this debug setting called all abilities. So basically I have all my abilities to start with. Um, so I can use my boots, I can use my sword and all that. But if I go over here and I get the uh, um, get the disabler, I can't use anything. None of my abilities. I can run around, I can still move, but I can't use any of my abilities. And you can see on the left side of the screen, all of my abilities have been sort of halfway uh, transparentized. And um, yeah. That's a that's a kind of interesting one too, interesting curse. Um, what else? There's the taunter, and then we've already covered all the storms. Okay, so taunter is the last one to check it out for today. And also, there's gonna be more of these items, I'm sure. At some point, I'll be like, oh my gosh, it's so it'd be so cool if there was this item or that item, or somebody's gonna suggest an item. I'll be like, you know what? That's a great suggestion. Let's create an item like that. So, um, yeah, this is just the beginning when it comes to items. And what's really great is these items are fun and quick to create. Uh, this is really rapid. I cause some of these items I created in like just a half an hour. So, um, oh, fell behind the rocks again. Let's get this taunter out. The taunter will attract all creeps to you. No matter where they are on the map, they start coming to you like zombies. Look at these guys. They'll go through hell and high water to find you. Here, I'll even get another one so that... Oh, it's already set to 60 seconds, that's right. So you can see there's a bunch of these guys just trooping across the map, finding me. And um, this one actually led to a pretty important bug fix I created this week. I didn't notice before, but see when I did this right here, I just uh, used god mode to jump across this little gap right here. Um, I was finding that all these little creeps were not smart enough to know that I had crossed the gap and they couldn't get over it. They were still trying to pathfind straight across that gap and I all, I knew I had pathfinding in this game and I knew it, the, the pathfinding worked in general so why the heck wasn't the pathfinding working in that case where you shouldn't be able to pathfind across this gap. So I figured it out. It was just basically an issue. It was a greater than or equals versus greater than issue. I needed to add that equals to my collision system. Check this out. In the collision system There's a little bit of code here called is intersection, and this used to look like this, right? If my upper right is greater than your lower left, etc., all these were just greater than's, 
And that meant that if something was at zero zero and the other thing was that where it was intersecting with was also at zero zero, they didn't match up as an intersection. So we needed to add this equals to those, you know, every other part of the dimension, each dimension. So that was a really cool bug fix actually. And uh, also I've got some other stuff in place here where I can test intersections for just the X, Y and not the Z. And that I had to add because when the sword goes flying out of your hands, I was getting it to land on the rocks all the time, on top of pillars and other places. And I'm like, okay, uh, basically the, the best way to fix this is to make it so it tests intersections on the X, Y plane only sometimes and not, not accounting for the Z. So it's in essence, it made it so that those pillars were infinitely tall in a way so you couldn't call it, you couldn't do any kind of movement on top of those pillars so that was an important bug fix as well and then the last bug fix which was really really important was um gosh i need to remind myself what it was oh yeah animations being able to catch up so this is something where i noticed that um some of the ai were the bots were just sitting there doing nothing they had no no mode no none of their uh, ai data was doing anything and um or i couldn't see what the ai was doing at all because it was, it's like their their uh ai wasn't even functioning and i was like what the heck's going on here and it turned out that when an entity goes off screen um it and dies. So, so basically, if an entity dies off screen, it queues up like five different animations. The player dies. In fact, we can show some of these animations over here. I'll kill this guy. See, he um, he gets thrown on the ground. He does this little animation right there where the light changes, his color changes, and then he flies back up into the air, hits the ground, and stands back up. That's like five different animations, and they all have this flag called they're called an M key force which basically means that it has to play those animations. So what was happening was somebody dies off screen and when an entity is off screen, it's not taking its render components. So um, the render system goes and it has a list of all of the on screen entities and then there's everything else that has a render component, right? All the off screen entities. It was only to, it, the render system only ticks what's on screen because it's very expensive to tick anything right on the render system there's a lot of voxel-y stuff going on where it's casting shadows and etc drawing painting erasing all that kind of repainting there's a lot of that goes on in the render system with voxels so um it had to uh so it has to be efficient in the sense that it doesn't you know it, it can't um it can't render those off-screen things so what was happening was it had queued up all these animations that were forced like i have to play these animations and then when the entity came back on screen, it tried to play those animations. So another side effect of that was that you would see ent you would see a player floating across the screen in the dead pose, right? They were just laying on the ground dead and moving around, and it looked really weird. In fact, in some of my videos recently, you probably have seen that uh, happen in the last couple of videos. So that was a really important bug fix, and um, I thought and thought about how to how to actually properly. Um, properly handle that I thought at first I could just um, make it so players always ticked in in the render system right and but that would be hugely inefficient it would be ticking all these off-screen entities which are some of the most expensive entities of all are the players because they cast shadows and they have all this custom armor and stuff like that so they're and then rendering outlines and there's a lot more that players do than than any other entity so the solution I came up with was to catch up animations and um, we can take a look at that this in, in tick animation catch up and render system so whenever the render system now starts an animation it starts it, it keeps track of what tick it started at and um, this tick animation catch up goes and detects when an entity has come back on screen and needs to catch up its animation so it compares the current tick versus the tick that it start, was supposed to start that animation at and that way it gets an elapsed amount of time that it should have elapsed since that tick and it goes through all of its anim animations, all the keys, and um, it can. And sometimes it can erase an animation entirely. Like, okay, we've we've never we already should have played that entire animation, so let's remove that one from the list. Sometimes it can go and and tick down some of its repeat counts. So an animation might repeat 
10 or 12 different times and it said mm, I'm gonna go ahead and only take three of those repeats now and then it can also take a remainder so after all that we have a certain remainder to the elapsed and it can go and apply that to the current animation and just say this animation is as this far elapsed already and um, that really he it this healed so many different issues that I that were it solved like three or four bugs at once so this is a really neat one. In fact, I really want to go and do some more testing here. I, I This took an entire day, I think, just about to really do this function and do it well. Um, but there's still a few more little issues. Sometimes I've noticed that entities aren't quite catching up perfectly. Um, it's really a good solution so far, but I think I do need to get it perfected because multiplayer. Yeah, if you've ever programmed any multiplayer stuff, uh, it's basically you got to get your your code really tight to be able to especially when you see the the point of doing this or uh the goal of doing Wraithbinder when it's in its online multiplayer real time combat and what I'm going to do is basically create a system where um all of the game is deterministic so given the exact same input the game will play out exactly the same, no matter what computer you play it on or whatever. So that means that I can transfer just data across the network, and that's how a lot of games, um, a lot of games, tend to works in this in a similar way where they only transfer data or input across uh, the network. Um, it's not like you you're trying to send the entire game state of all the entities, everything you send. If you're sending all that at once, every single t every single tick. That's a lot of data to try and transfer over the internet. So a lot of games, they basically just send over the input, which means that all of your stuff has to be super deterministic. Everything has to play out exactly the same every time. So this is probably going to be one of those things where it's going to be a bug later if I don't make it this working perfectly now. So there you have it. Thanks a lot for watching this video and um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something and we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. All right. Later.